Hey guys, it's Axiomatic Uncertainty here, and today I'm going to be doing the first in a short series on car physics in Unity. So, uh, let's just get right into this. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to be doing here is just getting a plane out, just so that we have a space on which to work. Let's just make that 1,000 meters across. Um, and then... I have this car model that I found on the asset store. I can show that to you right here. Um, and then, yeah, we're gonna just take this whole thing and uh, import it as we have here. And then we can just drop it into our scene right here, let's say, right? And uh, let's bring this up a little bit. And uh, you're gonna either, you can get this car, uh, I'll put a download link in the description I guess or you can find your own car and download that and then use that or you can model your own if you're good at modeling which I am not so uh, here we go so we have our car right and uh, what are we gonna do well first just save this uh, we're going to find some materials uh, some specific parts of the car that we want. So first off, we have the wheels. So uh, here's this back wheel, and uh, we're just going to throw a wheel. I'm not sure why box collider was up there, but we're going to throw a wheel collider on this guy. Uh, and I'll just make this mass of one. And uh, let's go with a. Let's actually let's just fly fly right over here, right? And. Uh, our wheel is not going to show up for a second. We need to add a rigid body here. Uh, so we're just going to do that. Let's make this thing you know, 1,000 kilograms, right? Let's add some. Oops. Sorry about that. Let's uh, let's add some drag onto this thing. Right. So let's just say, you know, same drag as uh, you know, angular drag. And I mean, that's a low value for drag, but you know, it's not a big deal. We can tweak all this stuff later. So right now, uh, we're just gonna come down here and uh, fine tune the values for the wheel. So the radius, uh, let's just try some values in here. So I like that a bit. Let's just make it a little bit wider. That's too much, maybe like 0.34. Yeah, I like that. So that is perfectly fine. Now we're gonna just sort of decreases our suspension distance, maybe make that like 0.1. And uh, I'm liking that too. So let's just leave it at that. And then let's make our spring distance a bit smaller, or our spring a bit smaller, because um, we don't want this thing flying around. Actually, let's just make this like 4,000. And then <clears throat> for these, these are very particular. So in the past, We've done racing games. These are the values that I've always had to remember. I will always go with just some simple stuff here, like this sort of. Just go with the uniform value across that whole thing. And then, uh, yeah, let's do that same thing with this. Actually, I wonder if we can... I've never tried this. Can we... Yeah, we can copy this and just uh, paste. Uh, no, I don't... See, how do we... So, can we... If we copy the component, maybe we can add the wheel collider and then, pay, yeah, so we can paste in these values. So that is just perfect. And then let's just do that again, right? Um, and just paste in the values and then we'll do that with the third one, right? And, uh, yeah, now we have all our wheels set up. So if I just pick this car up a second, for a second, and uh, drop it down, should see that it, not sure what's going on there. That was a little bit erratic. I don't know. Uh, let's just tweak our <coughs> box collider here. Let's modify that. So, oh, I see, that's, that's the problem. So we don't have a box collider on top. Um, so we will do that as well. Uh, so let's just edit that. And uh, if you notice, I clicked down here. You can edit your box colliders in this way. It's just a better way <coughs> to, uh, 
to get really precise stuff here. It doesn't need to be perfect. We're gonna make this pretty low since uh, you know, in a later tutorial, I'll teach you how to define the center of gravity for this thing. But for now, uh, you know, since we can't do anything explicit, we want this low just so that this car never flips if we're trying to, you know, make nice turns and go quickly and stuff like that. So I'm liking this right now. Uh, and hopefully this thing doesn't fly anymore. Yeah, so there you go. So now our car has a low center of gravity and it just sort of, as you can see, uh, falls, you know, and lands pretty nicely on the surface. So I definitely think that that <coughs> is good enough. So now we're gonna start adding and designing our scripts. So first script is gonna be, uh, I guess we could go with like, um, car controller, right? We're gonna need one of those. Uh, and then let's also add another script. And as you can see, we're doing this in C-sharp. Uh, we're gonna add a, or an input manager. Uh, so I like that. That is perfectly fine. Let's import, or let's open this one up first. <coughs> and, okay, so. In our input manager, uh, I don't think that we will honestly need this at all, right? So we can delete that. We're just gonna add two things. We're gonna public float, and that's gonna be our throttle, and then another float, and that's gonna be our steer value. Uh, you can make these whatever you want name-wise, but that's just my choice. And we're making these public so that they're accessible from other classes so that our car controller can access these once we hook it into it, um, or hook this into the car controller, that is. Um, and so now what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna, in our update thing, say throttle equals input dot get axis um, or is, or uh, vertical actually, yeah. So the vertical axis would be our W, S, w and S keys in our up and down arrows. So that's why we've chosen that. And these are, you know, con um, those are constructed methods already built into U Unity. So we don't need to worry about the logistics of how it's handling that stuff with the input. And then here we can do horizontal. And that is just the uh, sideways equivalent of that essentially. So it's you know, as you might expect if you play enough video games, A, D, and then the sideways arrow keys, so left and right. Um, and that is going to be it for our car controller class. Now we're just gonna come in here, or our input manager class. Now we're just gonna come in here. Ah, I see, okay, uh, one sec. Let me just uh, take this stuff and let's just undo all this stuff that we did here. This was in our car controller. I meant to do this in the input manager, right? So let's just undo all those changes and then just go back into our input manager and come in here and just paste that all. Uh, sorry about that. So this is perfectly fine. Now we can move on to our car controller. So in here, uh, we're gonna need a few things. So first off, we're gonna need to do a require component. Now, if you've never heard of this, what we're doing here is we're saying the script is only gonna run if we have a particular component here. Actually, our component is going to be an input manager uh, because we need this script attached to the body on which this is running. You know, if we don't have an input manager, this thing will not function. So we're gonna make that a dependency and we can add other dependencies later as we see fit but you know right now this is all so we are going to need a start manager or a start method and what we're going to do here is we're going to say <coughs> uh, we're going to define a number of public things so first off we're going to have um, a public input manager whoops input just do it this way input manager and we're going to call that im uh, and then we're going to have a public whoops which is make a space there. We're gonna have a public list and this list is just gonna oops so it's just gonna have a uh, a number of 
items in it. So we're just going to have meal colliders in here, right? And this list is going to be called um, Rattle Wheels, I suppose. Uh, and then we're going to have another list, right? And this list, we're just making sure that these classes are modular, by the way. So this list is going to be our steering wheels. <laughs> and uh, now we have all this stuff here. If we go back into our code, <clears throat> and we have a car here, we can attach our car controller. And you can see it attaches our input manager as we wanted. And then we have two lists and an IM value. And actually, yeah, I'm okay with that. So our IM, right, is going to be this. So we're just going to drag and drop that in and then throttle wheels. So we're going to have four wheels since this will be an all wheel drive vehicle and we'll have two steering wheels. Um, now we can just go into our back wheels, right? And so we can drag these in, right? Just like so. And then we can go into our steering wheels and just grab the front wheels only. Right, because we don't want the back wheels to affect the steering in any way. That'd be pointless. Um, sorry, that'd be more like an omnidirectional vehicle than anything. So uh, now that we have all of that set up, we can come in here and we can add just like another safeguard, and we can say I M equals get component. Right, um, and we're just going to make this an input manager. Right. So we can grab the attached input manager <coughs> and start using that. <coughs> so what are we going to do now? Well, in our update function, we are going to say for each. Right? And we're going to need two of these statements. But for now, we're going to do um, wheel collider, wheel in throttle wheels, just like that. And we're going to add another one down here. And you can probably guess that it's going to be a wheel collider, wheel in steering wheels, right? And the first one's going to be here. So what are we going to do here? Well, uh, we need to apply a torque to this. So we're going to say wheel collider dot. And then I believe that it's, or sorry, oh, we need the actual variable. That was the general class. Uh, so wheel collide or wheel dot, um, I think it's motor, yeah, so motor torque, right? We can say wheel dot motor torque, oops, uh, and this is a set get method, so we need an equal sign here. Um, <coughs> we are going to now, uh, well, okay, what I was going to say actually was that this is not invocable, so like, initially I was writing it like this, just remember that this is not, this is a set get, so I actually think it, yeah, so it tells you here, non-invocable member, um, so we need to make this an equal sign. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add another value here. We're going to say public float um, strength, right? Strength coefficient. Oops, just like that. And we're going to make this some default of like, I don't know, 20,000. Right? <coughs> this is pretty heavy car. We want some decent acceleration on this thing. So, um, motor torque, right? We can make this um, equivalent to our strength coefficient times our. Actually, yeah, <coughs> I think this is just a float. So what we need is our strength coefficient. I was going to say we need a vector, um, but yeah. So we're going to have our strength coefficient uh, times, right? <coughs> time dot delta time. Uh, and then times our input manager, I am dot throttle. And I think that this is going to give us some good results. We should get enough torque out of this thing. 
and you can see, yep, so our car now moves, and you can see the suspension is working and everything. The only thing is, as you can tell here, this wheel itself, right, is not turning. So, uh, we got that done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come into our settings, right, <coughs> for this class, and we're just going to add another part here. So we're going to say wheel, uh, you know, in this other 4-H loop dot steer angle equals and then we're going to add another value right we want this to be customizable um, max turn equals and then we need a number of degrees so I'm going to say 20 degrees uh, let's just make that a float <coughs> uh, with that F as well just round it off that way um, <coughs> so now we're gonna have our max turn value, right? So we're gonna have max turn here, and then we're gonna multiply this by again our im dot steer, and we don't need time dot delta time. Um, if you ever actually, let's just make this a fixed update, and fixed update just updates on uh, you know a fixed time frame, so it, it's more consistent due to the fact that um, it's you know meant for physics pro physics based processes um, and uh, just out of habit let's remove these so that is everything now I think we should have some good inputs here you can see our car will now drive if you're looking in the bottom view, you can see that it's not flipping or anything. Let's just zoom it out a little bit. We can get some good speeds here. Um, so yeah, that, I think that's going to be it for this view. You can see this thing is a little bit too fast, right? Getting a little bit shaky here. But, uh, you know, nonetheless, this is our vehicle and uh, you can see that it's working quite nicely so yeah that is going to be it for this um, you know the first in this series <coughs> of tutorials and uh, next tutorial we're going to be doing some basic camera scripting um, along with you know some stuff on how we can implement like you know a speed counter and uh, yeah, so we're going to be doing some neat stuff soon, but uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, remember to like, subscribe, and share my videos. Comment if you have any suggestions for future videos, and uh, yeah, bye guys.